Phnom Penh, the capital of Cambodia, has grown through the years in its own unique way. Unlike any city in the world, it seems to thrive on the camaraderie and chaos that the Khmer people are most comfortable with. When I first arrived in Phnom Penh, I could only describe it to friends back in Canada as being like a giant living room. Everyone knew each other and spent more time in the streets than in their own individual homes. I fell in love with the warmth and immediacy of this way of life. I began to discard old stereotypes and ways of thinking from my homeland and adopted a culture that worked just fine here. Old worn hardwood floorboards, rarely level, seldom measured, were preferred over the linear clean marble tiles and cold cement products. Local gatherings for meals over trying to cook in my own apartment. Finding activities, social and occupation, within one small neighborhood over traveling. And, unexpectedly, having friends, many friends who could neither read nor write. It is perhaps Western-centric to regard an illiterate individual as disempowered, misfortunate, or even unlucky. However, I tend now to see that the ability to read and write is only one way of being in the world, albeit the way that, in our wealth-based society, is most admired. I believe that Phnom Penh and respectively the Khmer people have something far more long-term than monetary and economic success to offer to the world and hold within themselves. It is there, in the music and art, the ancient voice that transcends communication, and most importantly, in the subtleties of their way of life. Big plans for skyscrapers and bank buildings are the dreams of boys, but they have made every other city on our planet look uniform and lifeless. I only hope that our biases on literacy, wealth, city structure, or anything for that matter, fall away, so that the intrinsic culture does not become endangered like in so many other places so that Phnom Penh can be a city for all to turn to, to be attracted to. Mm -hmm.